Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. There's a new interesting thing happening in the sky. Rahu is in the sign of Aries uh, till October 30th. And Saturn from Aquarius, as you know, he has entered Aquarius, is aspecting Rahu. And this is going on till 30th October because then 30th October Rahu will enter the sign of Taurus, right? No. <laughs> Rahu is always going retrograde in the opposite direction. So he's going to enter Pisces, right? On 30th October 2023. Which means for almost another 9-10 months, this aspect of Saturn is falling on Rahu. Now, this is a very interesting time because if I see... If you know astrology basics, then you know that Aquarius has two lords. One is Saturn, the other one is Rahu. Now, Saturn, the lord of Aquarius, is sitting in Aquarius. And Rahu is the other co-lord of Aquarius, who is receiving the aspect from one of the co-lords. But... Rahu is sitting in the sign of Aries. What is the sign of Aries? What is it? It's the sign of debilitation of Saturn. None other than Saturn. Saturn gets debilitated in the sign of Aries. We know this is a basics of astrology. So how, how does this conjunction uh, play out in the real world? Now this is a very interesting conjunction because it can act... Either ways. What are what, what are the ways, different ways that this conjunction can go? But before we understand those ways, we have to understand that at the end of our at the end of the day, it depends on our own horoscope and our own placements, the strength of the chart, the flow of the chart, the comprehensive analysis, and it depends on multiple other factors like. Where is Saturn placed in your natal birth chart? Is the placement of Saturn in your birth chart harmonious with the energy of Aquarius? And where is Rahu placed in the chart? Is the placement of Rahu harmonious with the energy of Aries? These are the questions we have to ask. So, what is your ascendant? Where, where is this transit happening as per your ascendant? So, if you are Aquarius Lagna, then Saturn is in your first house in the transit. And Rahu is in your third house. So, this transit will play out for you in a different way. Now, imagine you have Saturn in your original birth chart, either in Aquarius or, in, or you have Rahu in Aries. Then it's like, you know, a Saturn return which is happening or a Rahu return. So then this uh, will have different implications. Okay. So therefore, we have to understand before we get into this conjunction, we have to understand how are the energies of Saturn and Rahu playing out in the horoscope. Now, let's revise some basics from our yesterday's video. <laughs> what does Saturn represent? Now, we know what Saturn represents, but in terms, in context of Rahu, what does Saturn represent? Well, Saturn and Rahu are friends, but they are natural malefics also, and they are both tamasic. Both tamasic, they're, they're very similar, similar in the sense, they are both vayu tattva, both of them, airy element. Then they are natural friends. This is the first similarity is the tattva, then they are natural friends. Then they are natural malefics. Then they are co-lords of one sign. So there are four similarities. Please let me know down in the comments if you think there is any other similarity between Saturn and Rahu. Let me see who can catch it. <laughs> okay, so now Saturn does not like concentration of power. Saturn is basically... Uh, you could say the concept of communism where uh, wealth is distributed to people. 
but not out of force. It's not the communism which is there um, in the leftist countries or which was there in the USSR or, you know, current day China, Russia, whatever. That is uh, primarily communism by force where the government comes and, you know, says, oh, you got to tax, you know, tax the rich or whatever. But this is communism by choice, which means, okay, I have more wealth. So I distribute it voluntarily. I donate my money to others, to those who are in need. My money, my time, my resources, my energy, my wealth, my contacts, my connections. So that that is like voluntary uh, form of communism. So that is somewhat Saturn. And then uh, what is Rahu? Rahu is a very peculiar energy. Rahu actually represents the height of capitalism. <laughs> Why? Because Rahu wants everything for himself. That's all. He, he cannot tolerate anything is taken away from him. He just can't tolerate. It is unbearable for Rahu to think that something is taken away from him. Because Rahu feels this incessant need of sense enjoyment, sense indulgence. Rahu Ketu represents borders. It's the Lakshman Rekha as they say in Ramayana. So therefore, Rahu wants everything for himself. Rahu says, I want all the power, all the wealth of the universe. And that is why he also eclipses the sun and moon. Now what to speak of wealth, you know, sun and moon represent government. They represent power, name, fame, authority, the king and the queen. So Rahu can also eclipse them. So what to speak of other planets, right? So therefore, Rahu represents that tendency in us which tells you should take everything for yourself. Now, Saturn says, okay, take whatever you need but also give it to others. Now Saturn, what he's doing is he's throwing the third aspect. Now Saturn has three aspects, the third, seventh and the tenth. So, so we know these three aspects are very different, right? So please let me know in the comments. Uh, what do you think? What, what are the differences between these three aspects? Like uh, why does Saturn aspect the third house? Why does it not aspect the fourth house? Like we know Mars aspects the fourth, right? But why does Saturn not expect the fourth house? Does he not like it? Why does Saturn not expect the fifth house? Like Jupiter aspects the fifth, seventh, and ninth. But why Saturn doesn't expect the fifth house? Why only the third? And for God's sake, why the tenth house? Why? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> so now what Saturn is doing is he's throwing the third aspect. And he's throwing this aspect not just as Saturn, as Saturn sitting in Aquarius in the Mool Tricone sign. So this means now in general there is a lot of awareness in this world about giving away your wealth or you know you can see there are a lot that there, there could be a lot of discussions which could come up about uh, communism, capitalism, all these things could come up, right? Right right wing versus left wing you know right wing pol not politically but uh, economic right wing you know uh, economic left wing <clears throat> so these things would come up and now saturn is throwing his aspect which means he's trying to influence rahu and then rahu is in the sign of aries now does La rahu like aries what do you think rahu and aries Aries is another, um, it's a sign ruled by another tamasic planet, right? So Aquarius is ruled by one tamasic planet. The Aries is ruled by a tamasic planet. Saturn and Rahu are tamasic planets. So too much tamasic energy is there in this. Now when you say tamasic energy, does it mean, you know, uh, that everybody will waste their time doing uh, some, some tamasic activity? Well, not necessarily. What does it mean when you say tamasic energy, it means it can mean things which are not very pleasant. 
So for example, uh, Satvik Rajasik energy scan, like Rajas means, you know, it's like nighttime, you know, you are going to some party and there's like loud music, you know, that's like Rajas. And Sattva is like, you know, in the morning time when you are doing some yoga exercise or you're doing some spiritual practices, that's Sattva Gun. Tamo Gun is like, you know, you are addicted to some alcohol or something like that. But also it can mean you, you are working in a very dirty place. You are working with people who are not very easy to deal with. So these are also indications of uh, Tamogun basically. Where there is envy, there is hatred, right? So therefore, now Rahu in the sign of Aries. Now what is Aries? Aries is the first sign of the Kalpurush Kudli. So now you, you just try to think. Uh, sun gets exalted in Aries and Rahu loves to eclipse the sun. So do you think he will like Aries or he will not? Well, actually, he can love Aries, depending on what Sun, Mars, they are doing in the horoscope. But Rahu in the sign of Aries has this obsession even more to take things for himself. But now, his friend Saturn, he's throwing the aspect and he's telling Rahu, hey, I know you want it all. <laughs> But you've got to give it to others. So this is a time where either you will find people are doing a lot of charities or they are completely holding it. They are not doing anything. They are not giving anything. They are keeping it all to themselves. Why? Because, see, imagine it's a very uh, peculiar situation because the planet who wants to keep everything for himself is receiving the aspect of the planet who wants to give. But we have to understand that this is a contradiction, but there is a similarity, as I said, which means situations may not be very favorable, which means situation, the ambience may not be the best. So therefore, you might encounter some hindrance in dealing with your subordinates. Now, hindrance doesn't mean a power tussle necessarily. But it can also uh, mean that you are unable to convince uh, your subordinates or you are unable to give your experience to your subordinates. And it can work either way around also with your boss also. So therefore, uh, during these months, it is very important that we uh, maintain a good communication with our seniors and also with our juniors. And we should not force people to do things uh, which is beyond their control in the name of authority and power and control and dominance. If we do that, then what happens is that they will go on the other side of the spectrum. They will go on the other end and they will feel that uh, this person is exploiting us. So therefore, if you are exploiting somebody, then this is not a very good time for you. Or if you feel that somebody else is exploiting you, then now it is the time for you to speak up. Now is the time that you understand your boundaries and let others know about your boundaries. Now is the time that you make that shift in your life. Now is the time that you understand that you belong to not, not just to yourself, but you also belong to the society. But at the same time, there will be a terrible temptation inside to keep things to yourself, do not give it up, do uh, not give it away. So therefore, uh, this can be utilized in a good way if uh, we are doing some you know, meditation, especially some pranayam and chanting of mantras. Because it's the combination of Vayu and Agni. So, Aries is Agni Tattva Rashi, right? I mean, uh, Mars is the planet of fire. So, Aries uh, represents this fire actually. And therefore, when we know that there is fire, fire means control. Fire, in simple terms, it means control. And Vayu, in simple terms, it means enjoyment. It also means punishment because 
enjoyment and punishment are enjoyment and suffering are two sides of the same coin of the material world so therefore do enjoy be in your limits but also understand that everybody will have boundaries and there could be uh, times where you might have been doing so many things without uh, anybody noticing it or you might have taken some things for granted or somebody or certain aspects of your life or certain people in your life for granted but now is the time that they will speak up and now is the time that they will tell you about their boundaries so if you feel that if you see that somebody is indicating to you directly or indirectly that you are uh, trespassing their boundaries then please do not do it and if you feel somebody else is uh, trespassing into your boundary then please stop them everybody has limitations you me and everybody else so best is not to force people to such an extent that they don't want to be with us anymore because this is a very peculiar energy because one side is saturn the other side is aries so if things are taken for granted for a very long period of time then things might break apart and fall apart so therefore have an intelligent and honest and sincere communication about what is that you want in life in all areas of your life with everybody with your near and dear ones with your closed uh, people and also listen from them about their expectations and try to see as i said in my video yesterday also try to come to a negotiation and try to see how you can be the best version of yourself but without hampering yourself or without hampering others because you can't always uh, steal energy from others that's not possible neither can you let others steal your energy always once in a while it might be possible but you can't do it always and you can't let others do it always also so therefore please utilize this time properly to understand what the other party wants from us and any time we feel there is a strain uh, try to be more giving try to uh, share your assets try to share your resources your experience your knowledge your wisdom your divinity and also learn from others it's learning is always a two way street and once we do this then we will actually understand that life is not that tough provided our expectations are realistic okay that will be all from my side ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your uh, patience and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you like this video please click the thumbs up and share it with, with your family members friends relatives colleagues and if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit please go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him irrespective of where saturn is aspecting or who is receiving the aspect of saturn thank you very much